Hey, what's up, guys? This is going to be a real quick episode. Um, actually, I have one of my parts here at the house, which I'm going to actually try to do some diagnosing, see if I can see anything. My DME was working intermittently. Um, at one point, I would have to tap on it sometimes to get the uh, starter to, for the cylinder to start firing off. Um, that's a known issue. Usually, everybody says replace the DME, but I've been doing a lot of research to see how we could actually uh, go about you know, testing, look at the starter points, uh, see if we need to uh, you know, actually uh, fix it if I can fix it by myself. Um, also, identifying the different components of the DME. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to take a look. Okay, so here it is. Um, first of all, sorry for the lighting a little bit here, but uh, here's the DME. Uh, mine doesn't look in terrible condition, but we were just looking at the outside. This is already partially disassembled. Um, what I had to do actually is take a flathead screwdriver. And there's a couple of little spaces here. I'm just going to move this up a little bit and move it back in space here. And what you'll notice is you'll have to take your screwdriver, pull it in here, tab that open just like that. But at the same time, I can't do it because I have a camera in hand, pull that up. And you have another one right down there that you do the same thing with. So you just kind of put your right in there and you tap and you, and you just twist it the same way and pull that up. I've already done that. But... Once you do it, you just can't lift this back connector piece off of the front. You actually have a couple of tabs right here that sit in and hold it into place so it doesn't it doesn't slide backwards, okay? So you got one, two of those. So you got to kind of push down on those with the screwdriver. And then once you do, um, it'll give this access back. Well, it'll move it back some and let you open it. Now, mine's a little bit interesting. That's a little goofy looking and not great, but I don't know what that means. Um, I got to do some more investigation here because the, this here is here. It looks like it's aftermarket or some glue somebody put there or maybe it was original, but uh, it makes the clearance very hard. But you see these little tabs here. Um, let me see if I can focus in on them from the side. See how they see how they have the, the tab that you have to press down in order to release it. And then once you do that, you have this thing. I mean, that's not the best to slide on there, but um, you have this thing open. Okay. My, it, Okay, so now we have this board open, and as we look at this board, um, I'm going to first say it's not in terrible shape, but it's not in great shape either, but uh, one of the parts of this video is I'm just going to try to explain what I've learned about this board, because if you know what the various things are, it'll help you to troubleshoot and actually see what's going on with your DME, or as it's commonly more so referred to, your ECU. Um, but DME and Porsche land, especially at this time. So uh, to first start off, we'll identify this. This is the, the main computer, the CPU, or the main computer, the number one of the DME unit. So this is where everything runs to for processing, uh, which is pretty important. Um, then we come up here, and this is actually... Uh, so let me stop for a second. Let me break this down into di two different boards. This is your digital board, so your main computer board and stuff like this. This is your analog board. So analog, digital, that's how it's separated from what I see in articles. This is the main computer, the main brain of the ECU. This here is the uh, air to fuel mi mixture uh, digital uh, control. So it tells you basically uh, your air temperature and your c cylinders. It adjusts that properly. This right here is actually your memory. So this is like your stored settings of how everything should run um, in the 944. A lot of guys will take this out, uh, put a different, uh, this is called I think the EEPROM chip, chip and uh, they, they'll put a different one in. It would change the memory settings that the, you know, the main unit works off of and improve uh, the performance of the vehicle. Um, so that's that. Um, other stuff is just other things. They're not mainly anything to be concerned about. This is your fuel quality um, module that controls your fuel quality. This actually changes uh, per the type of vehicle you have. So you'll see different ones in 911s. It looks a little different, but in this car or different versions of a 944, um, but that's that. Nothing really there to, to be too concerned about. Um, and so we'll continue to identify some things and I'll tell you what's going on, on my board. Um, all right, so as we come to the top here, um, you see these these uh, circuits here. Now, um, this one right here is the first one usually goes with your injector circuit. That, And when you're looking at an actual schematic, you'll see a little bit better um, how things get routed uh, from 
where they are on the pins on the DME connector. Um, but then you have, after that, you have your uh, ignition circuit. So this is a primary circuit um, that deals with your ignition system. And this is actually the power supply, the VCC, that goes over to the digital side. Okay, that's a... That's what that is. Um, like for instance, you have two of the, two of these things right here. Um, these can, these are resistors. Um, you know, they basically one, two, and if you notice, I'm missing my other. It's it's not there. So even this board's been opened before, worked on, but I'm not uh, seated down properly. I don't think that's necessary, but I think vibration may cause issues here eventually. But um, these are for your idle control valves. There are transistors, transistors for those. That's pretty important. Um, right over here is another uh, pretty interesting chip. It's a chip. It actually controls the injection system again. So I'm not going to get really in specifics about how all this works um, because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not qualified to tell you. I'm just telling you where things are that if you know it's a problem to more so look you know, around certain areas, see if you see any, you know, when you flip the board over, if you see any broken solder joints or any issues going on, or like one guy opened up and found mold in here. Um, then looking here, this is pretty much uh, the big daddy, the ignition driver uh, transist transistor here. And then uh, I think on this other side here, it's one that kind of looks just like, like these over here. Um, but this actually does control um, the fuel delivery from the pump to the DME. Uh, relay it's like a control mod. so it tells it talks to the the pump back to the DME relay um, That's what that's for and so that's what I've, I've basically seen what's really cool is you know if you come here And you look a little closer you will um, When you're looking at your schematic you see off of the line these and you can tell again that this probably needs to be replaced This whole thing because it's not in great shape um, And I'll tell you why in a moment, but you see this 10 you see this 15 15 there let me focus in and if you look in the back you know there's a 14 appearing right there in the very back okay so for instance as i said before i'm dealing slightly with a problem with the injectors um either they're not firing or they're not getting fuel um the rail is not being pressurized properly by the dampener um or the the fuel pump regulator there at the other end is uh is remaining open when it should be closed or vice versa but if I'm going to attack the issue, try to figure out if my injectors are um, being fired properly from the DME, the 14 and 15 pin, if you look at the schematics, tell you a lot about how things work. And again, I can see the 14 and 15 pin. I can see that it comes over to here directly to this main injector chip. Um, you know, I can see the, these callouts. These are uh, 404s, R402s. Um, and it just, again, you're just checking to make sure everything's in, in good, in good settings. I'm still working with my own meter to figure out how to explain it properly. I'm doing troubleshooting and making sure that I'm troubleshooting it right. Um, but that's it. I think the biggest problem that happened with this, it's not in terrible condition, but I think, uh, so I had a hole, um, in the battery, uh, compartment, which is in the front on the passenger side. Uh, it's in the engine compartment, but closer to the firewall. Um, and I think it probably happened from the car sitting for so many years. Somebody probably just um, left it opened and water got in there and rusted. I don't really know too much about a lot of rust issues in that spot. But right underneath that on the on floorboard is where this DME sits. And I think some of the, you know, it might have been open for a while and a little bit of water, but some of this... Uh, you know, I don't think that's very common. Um, water got into those areas may have wreaked some havoc. I mean, it's not a terrible idea just to replace this entire unit anyway, just to make sure the car is reliable, which is something I'll do maybe at a slightly different point. But then because you, you look over here and you don't see it as bad. I'm sorry about this focus, but you don't see it as bad over here uh, necessarily. So something leaked in and, and got onto the system and and kind of did that. Um, you know, you can remove this board by removing these bolts here. Um, there's two on each side. And then underneath there's um, Phillips heads for two here, two on the other side. And the board removed. I don't see it necessary at this point uh, for me to do that. Because, again, um, I think my fuel problem, it, it, believe it or not, is really stupid. I think it boils down to the fact I just don't have enough gas in the tank. I keep putting in a gallon or so of gas each time and I'm running out. So... 
you know, I'm going to fill the sucker up a little bit better and, um, you know, make sure that that's not the problem. But I don't see anything outrageous sitting here that's telling me, oh, well, that's not happening. I would really focus here on my 14 and 15 pin and it running over to this main chip and everything off of here. And even to a certain degree coming here to verify that there's no breaks, no solder joint issues um, that could be causing the issue. But I just kind of want to explain it really quickly um, to you guys so that... When you're looking at the board, if you're just, you know, a novice or you're just trying to take a look and figure something out, just to know your way around the board, again, search the internet. That's what I did. That's how I found a lot of information. And um, maybe I should, uh, we'll see if I post something in the end of this board numbered out um, accordingly as a reference point. All right. Thanks, guys.